So let's apply what we've just learned to the classic quantum mechanical problem, the particle in a box example. So the way that we're going to solve this problem is going to be broken up into three pieces. The question is worded, suppose that everywhere there is an infinite potential except for a small region between 0 and A where the potential is 0. So the first thing we're going to solve for is what are the boundary conditions for this system? The second thing is, is we're going to show that the energy of the particle is discrete instead of continuous. And the final thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for the full wave function psi of x for this system. It always helps to draw a picture of these systems. And so basically a particle in a box problem is meant to illustrate is that we have a particle that's trapped. Essentially it cannot escape from this pit that it's located in. And so here on my x-axis, this ends up being my x-coordinate, and on my y-axis or my y-direction, this is generally considered to be the potential, which I'm going to be always denoting as u. And so the way that the problem is written, it says that suppose that everywhere there is an infinite potential except for a small region between 0 and a. And so in this case, this region here between 0 and a, the potential u is going to be equal to 0. Everywhere else, so outside of this region, and I can't really draw it because really these arrows, they go up to infinity. They keep moving. And so all that means is that any region that's out here and over here, the, the potential is infinite. And essentially what that means is that the particle can't exist out here in this region to the left, or to the right, I should say, and this region to the left. Typically, it's nice to sort of denote these three regions so I can call them by name. So this region on the left here, I'm going to call region 1. This region in the middle in the, in the well is going to be called region 2. And over here on the right, it's going to be called region 3. And so again, the potential is infinite anywhere in region 1, which means that x is less than 0. The potential is infinite in region 3, which means x is greater than a. And the potential is equal to 0 in between, in region 2, between 0 and a. What this means for our boundary conditions, though, is that since our particle cannot exist at region 1 and region 3, that means that we can actually set the wave function at those boundaries, at x, or at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to a. And basically, for this to be a continuous function, at both of those spots, it has to be equal to 0, because again, anywhere in region 3, it's going to be the wave function psi, the amplitude of the wave, is going to be 0 at this point, just beyond a. So if it's going to be continuous, it also has to be 0 at a. And the same thing is true over here. That if everywhere along here, moving backwards this way, and everything along here in region 3 moving to the right, again, if we're going to have a continuous function, then that means that our wave function has to be 0 at the boundary, at 0 and at a. So we will use these two boundary conditions when we get to that point after we solve our differential equation to then solve for this system. All right, so that takes care of question one. We've solved for, we've figured out what our boundary conditions for the system are. So now we're going to show that the energy of the particle is discrete instead of continuous. What this means is that we're going to be writing out the Schrodinger equation, or we're going to be solving a differential equation to do so. And again, that differential equation is minus h bar squared over 2m d squared psi by dx squared plus u of x psi of x and that's equal to e times psi of x. And so remember again we're not going to be able to solve this differential equation or not that we're not able to solve it but we already know the solution for psi of x in regions 1 and region 3 because the potential is infinite the particle cannot exist in either of those two regions, so that means then in region 3, my psi of x is going to be equal to 0. In region 1, my psi of x is also going to be equal to 0. That means the only place that I need to figure out where my psi of x is, is going to be in region 2, which is something that I don't know right now, and that's what we're going to be solving for. That means that I can actually explicitly cross out my potential term, my u of x term, because we know that in region 2, u of x is going to be 0 for all of x. So that means I'm just going to get rid of that term completely, and what I'm going to be left with then is just this simplified version, only because I know some of the conditions of the system, minus h bar squared d squared psi by dx squared 
and that's equal to e times psi of x. And so at this point, I'm just going to just rearrange a couple of terms. I'm going to just multiply both sides by 2m and divide it by negative h bar squared. So I get d squared psi by dx squared, and that's equal to 2me over negative h bar squared times psi of x. And then finally, I'm going to then just move this term back to the other side, this term on the right-hand side, back to the left-hand side, d squared psi by dx squared plus 2me over h bar squared psi of x. And again, this is a plus sign that appears here because I have a minus sign in this term before on the right-hand side. Move it over the other side, it becomes a plus sign. So this differential equation should look very similar to something that we've seen over and over and over again. Because I could simply write this differential equation, and this is an aside, this is very similar to the one that we've solved many times. This is the one where we've got the dy squared by dt squared is equal to, or not is equal to, but rather plus beta squared y is equal to zero. These two are exactly the same formulation that we're going to do to solve mars schrodinger equation that we used before on this previous differential equation. So just like before, we use the trial function y is equal to s e to the r t in this case. So over here for our Schrodinger's equation, we're going to use a trial function psi of x is equal to s e to the r x. If I take the double derivative of that, d squared psi by dx squared, well that's just going to be equal to r squared s e to the r x. So I'm going to take these two terms, plug that into my Schrodinger's equation. r squared s e to the r x plus 2 m e over h bar squared times s e to the r x, and that's equal to zero, which is what this function is equal to. From before, I just didn't carry the zero beyond from the previous line. But here and now, I can distribute out this s e to the r x, s e to the r x, that's times r squared plus 2 m e over h bar squared, and that's equal to zero. I can now look at these two terms. The s e to the r x cannot be equal to zero. That means this other term, this r squared plus 2 m e over h bar squared, can be equal to zero. So then I can simplify r squared plus 2 m e over h bar squared. That's equal to zero. And since all of these terms must be positive, 2 is a positive number, the mass of the particle must be positive, the total energy of the particle must be positive, and h bar squared is a positive number, then that means then when I simplify this, I'm going to get r is equal to plus or minus i times the square root of 2me all over h bar. So now we can take this and put together an intermediate solution. That means we'll have psi of x is equal to s1e to the i 2me all square root over h bar x plus s2 e to the i, or sorry, negative i, 2me square root over h bar x. And just like before, we're going to then employ Euler's relationship, e to the i theta plus or minus is equal to cosine theta plus or minus i sine theta. And so we're just going to take Euler's relationship and plug that back into this intermediate solution. Psi of x is equal to s1 e to the i root 2me over h bar times x, again Euler's relationship, cosine 2me square root over h bar x plus i sine 2me square root over h bar x plus s2, let me write that a little bit more clear, s2 bracket cosine 2me square root over h bar x minus i sine 2me over root over h bar x. And so now our job that we're going to do is we're going to distribute in the s1s and the s2s and then we're going to group together sines and cosines just like we did before. So I get psi of x is equal to s1 cosine 2me square root over h bar x 
plus s2 cosine 2m e square root over h bar x and then I have plus s1 i sine 2m e square root over h bar x minus s2 i sine 2m e over h bar x. And so now I'm just going to distribute out a cosine and a sine term in both of these cases. Psi of x is equal to s1 plus s2 times the cosine of 2m e h bar, my square root's on top, times x. And to that I'm going to be adding on i times s1 minus s2 times the sine 2m e over h bar, square root on top, times x. So now what I have is I have this grouping of constants. I have an s1 plus s2, and I have this i s1 minus s2. But since these are both just constants and they haven't been determined yet, then I'm just going to simply call s1 plus s2 a, and I'm going to call i times s1 minus s2. I'm just going to call that b. So that means then that I can write my intermediate solution now is a cosine 2m e square root over h bar x plus b sine 2m e square root over h bar x.